Welcome everyone. Um, this is our second showcase. Um, we This is um, Breakout C, Showcase C, Defining Feedback Within an AI Context with David Buck from Howard Community College. Um, just quick logistical things. Um, we do have quite a few people attending today, so we ask that you remain on mute during the session. We will have five minutes at the end for some Q&A, which I will help um, David to facilitate. Um, we are being recorded. Um, and um, David, I'll give you a five minute warning. Um, there's about five minutes of presentation time left, so we have time for questions at the end. Um, David has put his um, link to his presentation in the chat and I'll turn it over now. Great, thank you. Thank you everyone for uh, attending this session. Uh, I'm David Buck, I'm a professor of English at Howard Community College and I'm gonna talk about the use of Gen AI as a feedback mechanism within a first year writing course. So um, let me just back out of here um, and share my screen again. It seems to have frozen, which it seems to do. Okay, great. Second here. Okay. I apologize. Okay, great. So, uh, Annika, can, is the slide there? Okay. Yep, great. it's on background now. Thank you. So, just some background. Um, I teach four um, composition courses, one face-to-face uh, -face and three online. So, I use this um, uh, AI tool for feedback in a online freshman comp course, all three sections. And I use ungrading as my uh, assessment approach. So it's a gradeless class that depends on students' reflections and their um, uh, focus on the writing process rather than elevating and focusing on a product that is assigned a traditional grade. So there's a lot of reflection and um, focus on the process. I use a genre-based approach to writing. So my students are writing blog posts where they have eight prompts from which they can choose. There's, there's a lot of student agency in what we do in the class. Um, my feedback philosophy is one that's aligned with positive attention rather than error identification and deficiency. Um, I want to encourage a lot of self-efficacy in my students in the sense that uh, I want them to take risks in their writing as they um, move along. And I've tried to uh, approach AI head on. So I came up with a, um, and I have a link there to it. At my own policy, we don't have an institutional policy. I think there's a working group um, tasked with that. But I have um, an AI policy where I basically ask the students, if you're going to use Gen AI, make sure you acknowledge it. We want a transparent and ethical use of AI in the course, but it's ubiquitous, and I want them to know that it's out there. We're not going to put our, you know, heads in the in the proverbial sand. So I experimented with a tool called My Essay Feedback. They had a um, free pilot program that I joined, and um, the beauty of this tool was that it used Gen AI as a formative feedback system for students. So instead of going to Gen I to compose or create, we're using the um, AI to help this, the actual writing process in the drafting stages. And I um, chose the feedback that was comprehensive in nature. And I'll show you in a little bit that uh, you can actually choose a bunch of different feedback approaches and even create your own. So this my essay feedback tool was uh, it was uh, created by a math professor. So it had a pedagogical mindset to it that really drew, drew me to it. Um, and then you you can set optional uh, usages for the students. I made mine optional. Uh, my directions were, as you can see here, um, use this tool for some feedback for your blog postings. And then I chose the comprehensive feedback, which is basically very strict, prescriptive organization, ideas and content, word choice, sentence fluency, voice, all of that, that we want in a first year running course. And then um, you have the option to allow your students to upload their drafts multiple times so they, they can engage with the AI and actually um, prompt, reprompt, and, and keep going that way. Uh, these are my 
uh, options for each assignment that you create in my essay feedback. And again, very pedagogically minded in this tool. Um, I could set guardrails for my questions. I can limit the AI system so it doesn't rewrite. So it's only going to respond to student writing, which I liked as far as academic integrity is concerned. Uh, concerned. Uh, I could also add a feedback option uh, where uh, the student can reflect on the feedback they're getting, as well as create a revision plan. Um, I did not choose grading for this. However, um, it also um, opted the professor to choose if they wanted to assign grades or points for the student engaging with the tool. I am a gradeless classroom. I'm using ungrading, so I didn't want to um, choose that option. Um, what I found is that I, I'm, again, sorry. I, it's freezing up. So all that I'm gonna do is stop sharing and I'm just going to, me, sorry. There it goes. There it goes. Thank you. It's very, very um, tricky here. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to stop sharing and go to my PDF. I'm sorry, folks. I apologize for this. I'm going to actually go to sit down. Okay. Okay, let's see if this works now. I apologize. Okay, and we'll go to this. Okay, I'm gonna keep it here so I can just go through it. Um, the student responses uh, were mixed as, as most people can tell. Um, the pros were they liked that it gave them a first reading that, that my essay feedback um, my multilingual students like the grammar and sentence fluency assistance, um, as well as suggestion for adding more um, uh, evidence or examples. The cons, my students really didn't like the way my essay feedback, and my essay feedback is based on uh, the latest chat GPT, I think it's four or five. Um, they didn't like the way it changed their voice. Um, they didn't like that the suggestions they were receiving did not align with their intentions for writing in their blog posting. In fact, uh, the the AI produced more questions than answers for many of them. And a lot of them thought there was no return on investment to actually keep prompting and prompting. Um, so there, as, as James Lang talked about this morning, there's a, there's a time element here in how we actually use these tools for um, for learning and, and the skill set that we're trying to produce. My thoughts and in inclusion were as follows. Um, I remember the Wikipedia advice back in the day where, where we were told, you know, tell your students that it's not a great place to start. Uh, it's a good place to start, but it's not a, a good place to end, right? But my thinking is, why is the blank page a problem that needs to be solved? I don't want AI to circumvent that process. Um, it started to help me interrogate what I want my feedback to do for my students. My feedback, I want that to amplify their writing through their ideas. I want to build human relationships. I want to engage with the human spirit of my students. AI can't do any of this. It's an aggregate. It's a text predictor. Um, and we like to anthropomorphize the, the AI as if it's thinking and it's not. And so what I found is that the constraints of AI for feedback actually outweighed what I would like to do. So I'm not going to use my essay feedback anymore because I found that the AI, as we know, can't think through uh, language. It's actually not understanding the intention of the writer. It's just making an aggregate of data to to sound plausible. And so I think contextually, I wanted my students to think about what writing is, and that's communicating to another human being. Um, and so I think that this idea of feedback to start this first review of writing could be helpful. I think Grammarly can do that as well. Um, 
And that, but the issue with this tool was that it produced some discussions between me and my students, which were awesome. We talked about the exploitation of students, possible exploitation. When a student uploads a draft posting that has something to do with a, a traumatic context or a disclosure of mental health challenges. So we talk about the privacy of using AI tools for writing feedback. And it really helped us discuss what do we want our writing to actually do. And if it's to build relationships and to communicate with humans, the AI system kind of circumvents that process. Uh, what one cool thing that we talked about was how the feedback that sometimes they would get was uh, hallucinations, the false information, or we can even talk about the possible bias and bigotry that is in these AI tools that they might not have realized before. One of the research projects for my course is to look at, thank you, Annika, uh, is to look at the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. And one great conversation we had is the ethics of sustainability with these AI tools. When we talk about the environmental impact of the water usage that is needed to cool these AI servers and data centers. And so I love that AI itself became a contextual topic of conversation for me and my students, whether or not we use them. I saw a really cool blog post uh, from Clive Thompson, a tech writer. And he took uh, a statement from Harry Frankfurt's On Bullshit. And he basically uh, used it as the context of what you're going to get from a non-thinking AI tool. Um, and I turned this into with my own um, additions. Uh, bullshit's unavoidable when circumstances require like AI to write without knowing what it's talking or writing about. This is the production of bullshit because a person or AI has this opportunity to write without knowledge of facts. And this happens a lot in college where large language models are impelled to by students to write about things that they are ignorant. And I, I, I thought this was a fun way of just looking at AI for what it really is. Sure, it can help. But the, we have to be very knowledgeable and um, reasonable uh, at, by, by acknowledging the limitations of it. Uh, Clive Thompson comes up with these warning labels. And I, 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 we, we talked about this in my class of whether we should put this on our blog posting. One, all human, AI free. Or uh, this blog was written by a cyborg writer, a human with help from an AI tool. Or warning, this is taken straight out of AI and it contains a, an unpredictable amount of BS. And so uh, what I found with this idea of feedback in an AI context, it helped me define what my feedback should do with my students, but it also helped my students reflect on what feedback is for. And so I think a lot of what we were talking about this morning with James Lang, it's this idea of what it is we want our assessments to do, and then finding the right tools to, you know, reach that conclusion. AI for me can help in that sense of aggregating data to help organize a thought like a Jane Lang's um, uh, uh, example of an outline, uh, something like that, where I'm feeding the, the, the system, but I'm not using or depending on the system for my thoughts and ideas. And that's the whole point of my ungrading approach, which is to say writing is risk-taking, writing is vulnerability, if AI can pump out your blog posts, we have to ask about our assi assignment design. We have to ask what we're actually doing um, because I want my writing to interact with a human, another soul or spirit. That's where I'm going to then put my writing in that context instead of actually uh, relying on a machine to do it. So those are my findings. I, I'm very interested in what other people have, have maybe used AI for feedback, but um, I'm still exploring, and I think we all are still learning. So it's it's a fun thing to to think about. Great, thank you thank so you. much. Sounds like a fun experiment. Um, Heather Hartel has a um, question in the chat. Um, it's a bit long. Um, she's she's wondering what hidden prompts is the my essay feedback 
giving to the model to provide feedback? And is that transparent to you as a user of the model? Uh, nope. The, um, what happens is when the student submits the draft, it is going to be prompted by the feedback method or type that I've chosen, which is comprehensive feedback. So I don't see the prompt that will, that is generating the feedback for that student, but it's based on sentence fluency, organization, voice, uh, presentation. So those types of things, but no, I do not see the actual hidden prompt, um, behind the, the tool. Oh, right now it was a free pilot of my essay feedback. I believe they're trying to make it as low as $15 per user. But once it went behind a paywall, I wasn't interested in it um, because I'm thinking my own feedback is can work for my students as well as our tutoring and writing centers. Okay. Other questions for David? You can uh, come off mute and ask your question directly or put it in the chat. couple comments right now. Yeah, the environmental impact of, of the AI usage is something really we should be thinking about, as well as too, the um, when the student feeds their drafts into the AI tool, it's teaching the AI tool. It's actually helping the AI tool. It's, it's almost like students labor is being used by these tools to make them better. And that, to me, I have an ethical problem with that. It's the same thing as Turnitin. Turnitin is a billion-dollar company based on the backs of student writing. That's what that's what makes up their databases, um, as well as the internet. But still, it's it's that idea of the exploitation of students. Any other questions for David? Oh, I see Sarah's point there. Uh, help this quickly. I'm writing, I'm wondering. Yeah. Um, yes. So professor, and again, in the English department, we have a, a you know, a, a more, you know, concerted connection to feedback than maybe a, a non-English professor or non-writing course. And I think this could be helpful in non-writing courses, my essay feedback, just to get students that first initial look through. Um, and, and maybe that's where my, uh, my bias is. I'm blind to that potential use. Uh, because I'm thinking of it only in my context, but all learning is contextual. And so maybe some students in, in you know, hard sciences or writing in other courses could be um, could be helped, at least in the writing process for uh, for those classes. That's a good point. Yes, Wayne, ungrading has helped. Uh, some, some people have asked me, do you see a lot of AI usage in your classes? I don't because I've removed the connection between the writing product and a grade. So now there is the incentive to whatever we want to call it. I don't want to be surveilling my students, but cheat or whatever. Um, it's not there because they know that they can write authentically warts and all and still not have a punishing grade there at the, at the end to, to, um, to judge their writing or the quality of their writing. We can even talk about the linguistic freedom that we have when we, when we do that. David Teresa is asking if using this tool has impacted how you provide feedback or how you plan to provide feedback in the future. That's a great question, Teresa. Thank you for that. Uh, not really, um, because uh, and by the way, my students told me they're and I I am not a I did not do a study. This is not this is just me. I'm a hack. Uh, so please take my my two, my word as two cents. But my usage of students of the my essay feedback went down. Why? Because as the semester progressed, they got more of my feedback and they and they thought to themselves, why am I even using this tool? So in a way, it's maybe affirmed my human based feedback that I'm doing with positive attention instead of error identification has really helped my students gain that confidence. And, and really, they come to my class with a lot of trauma from previous English courses. I'm I'm there to hopefully heal that, but also encourage their writing voice that they have. And, and blog posting helps do that, um, keeps that uh, that openness there. Okay. Um, 
just a couple more comments about sort of ethics and social justice and thinking about all of this in the context of AI. Yeah, I, if I were if I were teaching a philosophy course or maybe even ethics and literature, I'd be I'd be um, you know really using AI and the issues that are raised by AI big time for my course topics. I think that's what I would be doing. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, David. We're at the end of our session time. Um, we, I think, are not going to close the breakouts. <laughs> I said that last time and then they closed. Um, so if you are attending the next showcase in room C, you can stay here. If you are intending to go to a different room, you are welcome and invited now to rotate um, to your room by selecting the breakout rooms button and choosing room A, B, C, or D. Um, and our next session will begin at 1210. Thank you.